I just got a package from Web Cyclery. The trials world is quite different from the mountain bike world, and I know almost nothing about trials. Web Cyclery is one of the largest dealers for trials parts in the U.S. They gave me some really great advice. I'm going against some of their advice because <laughs> I'm stubborn. They didn't recommend going tubeless. I want to go tubeless as an experiment. Um, I'm not going to be a competitive trials rider, so it's okay if it's a little bit heavier. Anyway, here's what I bought for my build. Now, trials bikes have kind of two ends of the spectrum. There's the street trials bikes, like the Danny McCaskill trials, where you're doing tail whips and flips and uh, stuff on urban things. And those bikes have a really compact geometry. And then there's the, like, the mod trials, which are 20-inch competition, and then the 26-inch competition trials on the other side. They're super stretched out. They don't ride like a normal bike. They don't have seats. They're meant to be bounced on the back wheel a lot, and so they're optimized for that, for jumping up really big rocks. And I wanted something in between. I probably want something that leans a little more toward the street trials, but that has knobbies on it so I can play around on the rocks. That might be a really bad idea, but these parts reflect that desire. So first up, we've got a handlebar. This is a Jitsi handlebar. Trials bars use a 31.8 clamp. They haven't moved to the 35 that we're so crazy about in Enduro World. These are more competition than like urban stuff, but I think this is gonna work really well. So these are 730 mil wide and they have a 110 mil rise. This was the most expensive part of my build so far. It's the fork. This is a Jitsi fork. And we're still using vertical dropouts on these, which will work with the wheel set I've got coming. The forks take a lot of abuse. You often hop on your fork a lot. Sometimes when you do a hook, you get your front wheel up a wall and then uh, bounce up. It's got a super thick wall here. So it's a nice thick fork, but it's sturdy. This is more of a trials competition fork than a street fork. It's gonna work great for what I'm working for. And I'm going all disc, so that'll be good. So that right there is 300 bucks. And here are all my small parts. Web Cyclery is based out of Bend, Oregon. I've actually been to their shop. It's a really cool shop and they don't just have trial stuff. They have a ton of mountain bike stuff too, but they happen to be one of the biggest in the US trials dealers. Thanks you guys, you're awesome for supporting the channel and helping me out. For the stem, I just went with a cheap basic trial tech 90 mil stem. Uh, this is closer to the street side of things, so I'm not going to be quite as stretched out. I'm a short person anyway. A 26 inch bike's pretty big for me, so I decided to keep it pretty compact. My Geo is going to be pretty close to an inspired hex, which is what I wanted. Nice to see some inexpensive parts. I got a special star nut that fits this fork because the steer tube's so thick. I needed to make sure to get the right one. In here, I'm going with a Trials Tech chain tensioner. This goes on the derailleur hanger mount and it puts tension on the chain since I don't have sliding dropouts. It keeps the chain nice and tight so it's like a single speed. This came recommended from the guys at Web Cyclery as well. And finally I've got an inspired chain ring and bash guard for SRAM cranks. This sucker is expensive but when you look at it you can see why. It's all machined out of one piece it's a 22 tooth and a bash guard in one. But this was a hundred bucks, a lot of money for that. And some trials parts are really cheap, like the stems, and some parts are really expensive, like this. But it really simplifies things, and it works with SRAM cranks, which I'm used to. So this will go on my SRAM cranks, bash guard, and chain ring, all in one. Pretty cool, slick little combo. My frame's all painted and it's drying and I just got the fork, so I'm actually going to spray paint the fork to match the frame. It wouldn't look bad to have a black fork with it, but I think tying it all in together in one color will look pretty cool. These Jitsi logos I'm not able to get off very well. They feel painted on. So, let's see, this is 220 grit. I'm just going to sand down the edges so there's no bumps when I do paint it. Covers well, even on black. 
Usually when you paint on black, it's a darker version of the color you wanted, but this looks pretty good. This has been a fun project for me because I know so little about trials geometry. I know what the numbers mean, but I don't know what makes a good bike and how it really changes the handling for trials. So it's been an interesting experiment to study fork offset and wheelbase and chain stay length and reach and bar height and stem length and all of that. It's like entering a whole new world. And so I have a lot of sympathy for those of you that are getting back into mountain biking and you feel overwhelmed. It's overwhelming to start from scratch. Call me vain, but I also don't love a whole bunch of logos all over my bars and cockpit and stuff. I just want it to look clean and tidy. So I'll also be sanding these down and painting these black. I'm Piece of cake, we got black bars now. For cranks, one of my patrons sold me some 170 mil SRAM GX cranks for a good price. Thanks Mike, really appreciate you. Here you can see how the new bash ring fits. Look how much smaller that gear is up there. In trials riding, you don't need a big 32 tooth because you're not going anywhere fast. You need the perfect gear for those pedal kicks and the slow speed moves. I really like the way these chain rings mount. It's really easy. Alright, now this cutout goes where the crank arm is. I've given the paint a few days to dry and the paint on the forks is nice and smooth and glossy. The paint on the frame has some bumps in it and some imperfections, so I'm gonna wet sand that. Wet sanding is just what it sounds like. You dip your sandpaper in water and sand the frame. The water puts a little less friction on it so you're not taking off a ton of paint, but it just helps it glide over it smoothly and just hit those big spots. All right, gone over it and uh, took down all the orange peel, all the little micro bumps on it. I didn't remove much paint at all. I just kind of smoothed out the top layer. So now I'm gonna rinse it all off, get all the sanding dust off of here so it's totally dry for paint tomorrow. Remember those cable guides that I cut off that weren't quite what I wanted? I went on Amazon and got some of these cable guides. They are aluminum, really thin, and they stick on. So right now I'm gonna find out where I want them on the frame and run my brake line as a guide. So from a competition standpoint, I don't know the disc brakes are the best option for trials. They're probably not. It puts weight at the back of the bike. The rotors are big and likely to get hung up and bent on things. So the hydraulic rim brakes actually are lighter. You've essentially got a 26 inch rotor because that's the size of the wheel and it's more centered. And there's no rotor to smash on rocks and get all bent up. But I'm not gonna be a trials competitive guy and if I do do a competition or two it'll be for fun not for serious. So when I read the reviews on these one of the complaints is people say they can't actually get the zip tie in and so I believe that's because the tape that backs this is blocking it. So I did an experiment and I cut out the center of that and it solved the problem. So if you hold these up to the light you can see through them and see where that gap is and cut it out with the razor blade. So that's what I'm gonna do. And uh, get a couple of these guides on here. And then I'm gonna paint over these so that they look factory-ish. We'll see if that works. There you go, now the zip tie can get through there. All right, we've got our mounts on. Now it's ready for paint. Last coat of paint. We're gonna paint over those mounts so they, we'll see how they look. I've never seen anyone do that, but it'll probably look better than these black ones stuck here. I zip tie these on and held them down for about 10 minutes to get that VHB tape to activate. Hope that did the trick. I'm not gonna do a clear coat because I wanna be able to touch it up when I bang it up, it's crashing on trials. <laughs> 